Hi everybody, it's Ian from the Jessup's Academy team and welcome to this eight part series on the basics of photography. Whilst everyone stays at home safe, we're going to help you take control of your camera and get the results that you've always wanted. So if you recently wanted to get into photography or perhaps you've bought your first camera and you're not getting the full potential from all its features and settings, then this series is absolutely for you. In episode one, we look at the basic camera setup, and that includes camera handling and also caring for your camera. So grab your cameras and let's get started. So the very first thing you'll need to do once you're taking your camera out of the box is charge your battery up. And once you've fully charged it, you will need to place it into your camera. Now, most batteries are housed at the bottom of a camera and you'll find a little release catch there. In this case, it's Sony. You can see also right down inside that there are some contacts and you'll need to line these contacts up and that's how you know you've got the battery going in the right way. So, uh, in they go. Push down and it'll clip. Um, and then you can lock the battery compartment cover. We're all ready to go. Next up, we're going to pop your memory card into your camera. Now, it's worth pointing out your memory card holds all your images and videos, so it's very much worth buying a reputable branded card. This is the one I'm going to use today, and it goes into my memory card slot. Now, the memory card slots are in different places on different cameras. On this particular camera, it's in a flap uh, on the side, and it actually has two slots. Uh, some memory cards are housed next to the battery compartment underneath. Now, when putting the memory card in, if you experience any resistance, it might mean that you have your memory card round the wrong way. Always put your memory card in with the contacts, the gold little uh, area you can see at the bottom there, pointing down. Um, and in this case, the uh, picture side of the card is pointing out towards the lens. It may not be the same on your camera, so just try. And then when you push it down, you should feel a nice positive click. Pop the lid down and we're ready to go. Okay, so now we're gonna look at actually how you put your lens on your camera. If you have a camera that has an interchangeable lens, it will come separate in the box, and you will find, firstly, on a mirrorless or a digital SLR camera, you will have what's known as a body cap. To remove that body cap, you will find a little button, which is either on the left or the right-hand side, depending on the camera brand. You'd simply press that button in, and then twist the lens cap off as such. Now, if you have a mirrorless camera, you will see the sensor. It's straight there. You can see that very colorful um, you know, material. Uh, that is actually our camera sensor. If you have a digital SLR camera, you will just see a mirror. Next, we'll take the uh, rear lens cap off of the lens. Uh, and again, similar, we just twist and off it comes and that exposes the back of the lens. Now, what we're looking for on uh, both lens and camera body is a little dot. Now, it can vary in color depending on the camera manufacturer. Uh, in this instance, for Sony, it's white. And we also have a white dot on our uh, camera body. Now we go white dot to white dot, uh, as you can see there, and we just twist and a nice positive click, and that lets us know that our lens is attached. Now, of course, it is uh, <laughs> very imperative not to press that uh, little lens button in, um, as you might find your lens coming off when you don't want to. And equally, when you change lenses or you uh, want to uh, pack it up and put it away in a bag perhaps, uh, do try and do that in a dry environment because uh, lots of dust can go into the camera. And obviously keep your lens cap, uh, your rear lens cap and your body cap nice and safe. So when you first turn your camera on, you will see a screen something like this. It will ask you to set a language, which we can do. It will only ever do this on the very first time you turn the camera on. It will also ask you to set an area, date and time. Now, although it might be tempting to skip this step, it's very useful to have your date and time attached to every single picture you take um, and actually correct, of course. That is helpful when it comes to cataloging your images later on. So I'm gonna press enter there and set my area up and go ahead and set my date and time. Okay, next up is attaching the camera strap, which you'll find in a box. It usually has a brand on it and the camera model. It's thick in the middle and on one end, uh, well, both ends, it's thin, which enables it to thread through these little metal clips on the side of the camera. 
Out of all things in the initial camera setup, this can be the most tricky. It does require some patience, but obviously once you've got the strap on there, you can leave it once it's all fully adjusted for you. Another option is to use a strap system, and the one I use is from Peak Design. And there are some key advantages with a strap system. Firstly, uh, the strap system comes with these little lugs, and they simply thread through uh, the camera clips in exactly the same way as a normal strap. But what it allows you to do is to then uh, get your strap and instead of threading things through every time, you just simply clip it on uh, like so. Uh, this uh, camera strap is called the Peak Design Leash. It's thin, it's very lightweight, very versatile. Uh, the other end, of course, then just clips uh, onto the other lug, which I already had in place. Now, the advantage of this, of course, is speed, but not only that, you will find as you grow in your photography journey that you will want to take your camera strap on and off when you're uh, doing certain activities, like putting your camera on a tripod, it can get in the way. So, I really do find it very useful. Equally, um, it's a really long strap, and actually, what it means is the, the camera can be um, uh, adjusted very easily uh, to uh, be at different heights uh, with the adjustment, as you can see um, and that allows you to uh, you know keep the gravity of the camera away from your body sometimes and avoid pulling on your neck it's a really worthwhile kind of strap system Now the next thing we're going to set up is the viewfinder and the viewfinder often gets missed in initial camera setup and that's because um, it's a setting that's slightly hidden away and if you wear spectacles and you, you'll know you have a prescription like minus one, plus two, etc, etc. What you can do is actually focus the viewfinder for your own eyesight. This has got nothing to do with the camera's focus, it's just the viewfinder. So if your camera does have a viewfinder, you will find this setting really handy. Most of the time it's a little wheel next to the viewfinder or sometimes a slide underneath the viewfinder. In each case, you need to look through your viewfinder and when you do so, you will see either at the bottom or the right hand side, sometimes the left hand side, a group of numbers. Lots more about what these numbers mean later on. But what you're looking to do is use this wheel to focus those numbers or any information you can see in the viewfinder. And this will ensure that your viewfinder is sharp and adjusted for your own eyesight. It's a really, really useful thing to do and can really impact the overall handling and usability of your camera. Okay, so now we have our strap attached, our memory card in, our eye diopter adjusted, and our time and date all set, we are ready to start shooting. But of course, when you look at a camera, there are all sorts of buttons and dials. And the main one, or what we call the main control dial, which is just here on the camera, I don't know if you guys can see that, um, will generally be set to auto when you first take the camera out of the box. And that's absolutely fine. We're gonna be talking through all those modes as we go through the series of programs that we've got lined up for you. Um, before we even do that though, I wanna talk about some really basics. Uh, and one thing that can make the difference between a really sharp picture and a really blurry picture is how you hold the camera. I know that sounds really basic, uh, but actually it can make a big difference. Now, it's very tempting, especially with cameras nowadays, whether you've got screens on to hold the camera out in front of you like this or with your arms out like that. And of course, that gives you something we call camera wobble or camera shake. Even with cameras that have image stabilizing systems inside, it's always best practice to hold the camera properly so you get the sharpest result. And the way to do that is to put most of the weight in the left hand underneath the lens. So as you can see here, it's almost like I'm pointing my thumb towards my left and right now your right okay and the camera goes in and I hold most of the weight in my left hand uh, so my knuckles are pointing towards the floor the right hand then simply comes in and that will obviously steady the other side of the camera and it will allow me to squeeze the shutter with my forefinger and that squeezing of the shutter is really important because if you actually jolt it it means that you will generally get a jerky result and I'm, I know I'm exaggerating there uh, quite a bit but actually it can make a big difference so the uh, the key thing is to put most of the weight in the left hand and squeeze the shutter with your forefinger of your right hand nice and gently as you take a picture this can make a big difference to your photography 
Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you guys today is something called waking your camera up. Now, when you first switch your camera on, it does have a habit of actually powering down. And this is almost similar to a TV going into standby. So when I say wake up your camera, the way to do this is to press the shutter very, very lightly. And that will mean everything springs into life, including all the detail on the back screen. Of course, when that switches off, it can be very frustrating, especially when you're learning photography. So that's it. You should be able to hear a little bleep as well. Uh, a nice positive bleep to say your camera's awake and alive and ready to go. So that's the end of part one of our basics photography series. We'll be back next week with part two. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, do give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that all important bell icon so you'll never miss another video. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you again next week.